And then, uh, don't get pregnant. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to be on home remedies. So the thing about home remedies, first of all, okay, um, my basic, my basic, um, my basic sort of, what should you say, viewpoint, perspective on home remedies is that they are used essentially for um, aiding and abetting the natural process of detoxification, which is going on constantly at some level or another. Now, essentially, since this process of detoxification is a natural process, um, ideally, what we want to do is we want to um, allow the process to take place without doing anything, if it is all possible. Because from my, my take on it, my feeling about it, these detox processes, is if we let the body do what it's doing, which is the natural sequence of events which it, it, it initiates in order to get rid of excess baggage of one kind or another, is that in the process of doing so, when it's finished with, the immune functions are stronger than when it started out. Now in terms of knowing what the immune functions are, which what the organs involved in the immune system are, in order of importance, at least this is my take, is the, um, the large intestine, which I think is basically rules 60% of the immune functions of the body, and then the kidneys, and then the liver, and spleen, and the white blood cells, the white blood cell system, lymphatic system. And um, since the body is al al always seeking to make balance at all times and at all circumstances, there will be always, hopefully, see the whole thing with these detoxes is that, or discharges, is that the conventional, the conventional take on these, you know, the kind of conventional response that most people have when they get a flu or a fever, or a sore throat, or whatever it may be, is that they think there's something wrong with them. And um, that's not the case. It's actually a very healthy thing to go through. And therefore it is fixing detox. Okay, because when, like what I always say to people is that the day, you, the day we put that first mouthful of brown rice in our body, chew it up and eat it. The very moment we do that, a mirror arises out of the ground in front of us, and in that mirror is reflected in reverse order all the stages of illness that we've been through until that particular moment. And then, so what we do is we have to go through that journey <coughs> of the stages of illness in reverse order. We have to recapitulate in reverse order all the various episodes that we've had until we've, we've gone through them all, till we're back at stage one, because we're always in stage one. Something terrible has happened. And I said, what's that? He said, I have Bell's palsy. And I said, what's that? I don't know what Bell's. He says, well, your whole face just goes numb and you're... It, the, Paralyzed. It all, it all sinks, it sinks, it falls down, it gets paralyzed. And I said, well, that's uh, cranial seventh nerve paralysis. Actually, I knew that. And I said, that cranial seventh nerve is right under the spot where you had the blemish on your cheek. And I said, you didn't have this before, did you? He said, as a matter of fact, yes, I did about... I don't know, X number of years, 10 years or so, or something like that, before he was diagnosed with a lung cancer, he had had an episode of Bell's palsy. And I said, well, what did you do? He said, well, I went to the doctor, and um, 
they gave me cortisone and it was gone in about, you know, 10 days or so after taking cortisone pills, right? And I said, well, uh, don't worry about it. This is your Bell's palsy leaving your body and it should be gone in two or three days. And he called me back like a week later and said, it's gone. So that's a very dramatic example and very clear of what I'm talking about, the recapitulation of all the episodes. So if you do that, then you will find that, that if you keep a record of it, that you will go through all these episodes, like when I ignorance and therefore fear around the whole problem of illness that we have. And, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. But I think that that's one of the major, major um, concomitants to people's response when they get a detox happening. Because I see it all the time, you know, people calling up after they've had a counseling or they just start on their on their own. And they call up and say, oh, you know, oh, what happens? I mean, it's like, it's a classic story, really. I mean, people want to read a book, so I'm just giving you some kind of, you know, picture of this. And they want to read a book, so they find this book on Macrovice, and they read it, and they oh, that sounds like a good thing to do. So they take the book home, and they read it, and they say, yeah, so I'm going to do this, you know. And they, so they get the brown rice, and the bees on it, et cetera, et cetera. And they start, and 10 days later, they have a blinding headache, or they have massive nasal discharge accompanied by fever and sore throats. And they say, this <laughs> doesn't work. This, is, this right. doesn't work. It's killing me. So they go back and have an ice cream and it stops and they feel great. <laughs> uh, you know? <laughs> and that's you pretty classic. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Those particular parameters. Was that both ankles swollen or just one? Just the left. I said, it's your left <laughs> kidney. <laughs> But I mean, it's, it's sometimes there's more involved in that when people have some swelling. No, in the case of left ankle, it means your left kidney is swollen, period. That's what I mean. Same thing, left wrist, left kidneys, right wrist, right kidneys, right ankle, right kidney. So, um, so then you look at the urine, so you put some, urine, amount per day, volume of urination per day. Very classic indicator of kidney condition. The other thing is the color of the urine. If the urine is too pale, you know, if it's like the color of glass, too yen. Or if it's the color of the floor, brown, dark, or you know, this color, or something approaching that, then it's too yarn, too tight. So you look at the, that's why you should always look at your urine. And also when you urinate, I don't know whether women experience this at all, but men certainly do because they, but it's women should experience this because if there's plenty of vitality in your body, chi flow that is, then your urine should froth when it hits the water. Froth. Frothing. That's right? a guy thing. So I think it's probably more a guy thing. Stand on the seat and try it. Yeah, right. Yeah, we have to look. Look at that. Okay, then. So, in case of women, like if you're getting any kind of like vaginal discharge for uh, what's it called, cystitis like systems, and for, you know, for inflammation, irritation in that region, um, those kinds of things, that's a kidney bladder condition. Jeez, I hope I don't go back to.